Good evening, everyone. My name is Sarah Ndano, and welcome to this week's episode of the Skin Therapy Show. On this show, we are going to start with an acclaimed celebrity hairstylist who will clue us in on how taking care of hair will make our skin feel like milk. With over 40 years of experience in her field, she has worked with the big names in Hollywood, including Naomi Campbell. I'm talking about Venus and Serena Williams. I'm talking about Luda Chris. Big names, trust. Yes, and she's also the brand ambassador for a multinational hair company and hails from Trinidad. Please allow me to welcome the gorgeous, the multi-talented, ever so beautiful and very humble Miss Sharon Brown, aka Miss Shaz. Welcome Hi, to the show. Hi. Asante, Asana. Oh, Karibu. You <laughs> yeah. I've been so, here long enough. Mm hmm Ms. Chaz, I must say that I am very much honored that you took time off your busy schedule to be here with us. Tell us uh, a brief history about your career and yourself. Okay, I've been in the industry all my life, professionally for the past 41 years, almost 42 years already. Wow. Um, my focus over the past 30 years has been hair loss and women of color. Mm -hmm. And I'm on a global mission to turn glam green and take the pain out of beauty one strand at a time. I'm an advocate for other salon professionals because over the years, a lot of us have died from all types of illnesses mm -hmm. and we didn't know it was related to what we were using in the salon. So that uh, my awareness has been expanded, mm -hmm. you know, and it has awakened the consciousness in me. So I have really been focusing the last few years, I should say the last five years mm -hmm. in educating salon professionals mm -hmm. in how to better take care of themselves and their clients. Wow. So how did you get to Hollywood? I mean, it's such a competitive industry. It is a competitive industry, but competition is good. Yeah. Competition is healthy. If you raise in hell and you don't have anybody to raise hell with, mm. you know, if you raise in hell. Mm. <laughs> you know? yeah. So you always need someone, you know, over your shoulder, you know, to keep you on point. I know a lot of people are scared of competition, but I like the competition. That's mm. why I left my country and moved to the United States mm. because I was at the top of the game in Trinidad, I didn't really have anybody that was my rival. Mm -hmm. So I left and I went to Florida for mm -hmm. challenge. Wow. That's exactly what I said I was going for, for challenge. Mm -hmm. And it's been a challenge in 29 years. Mm -hmm. So how does hair relate to skin? Hair relates to skin in a very big way. First of all, your scalp is your skin. Yes. Okay. A lot of people fail to realize that your scalp is an extension of your forehead. Mm -hmm. The skin is the largest organ on the body and it releases a lot of toxins. And I, I can't understand for the life of me why a lot of women ignore shampooing their hair. It's like that personal hygiene is not at the top of the list. Mm -hmm. There's a myth that says that if our hair is dirty, it's gonna grow better, and that's nonsense. Your hair needs a healthy environment to grow. Yeah. A lot of the times that women have problems with their skin, it might be related to what's going on in their scalp. And because their hair is dirty, it's rubbing against their skin, mm -hmm. and then they have all these issues. So let's talk about hair products. Yes. And how they affect our scalp, which is very important because I know most of the people do not know what exactly to use on their hair, which in turn um, affects our scalp, you know? You know, we have, uh, I'm sure you've, you've come across cases where uh, of, uh, someone has a lot of dandruffs or mold growing on uh, the weaves that we are wearing. Please, um, how can we identify the kind of products that we are going to use on our hair, the good products for our hair? It is so important. That's a question that I've been asked so many times since I've been in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And I'm not really familiar with what's being sold. I mean, a lot mm -hmm. of the products that I see that are popular are really over-the-counter products in the United States. They're not professional products. Oh, wow. But yet here, they're professional products. What I also notice is that in my travels around the world is that the third world countries have become the toxic waste dumps for these cosmetic manufacturers. Products that are banned in first world countries, they dump it in the third world countries because people oh. are not aware. Okay, and they're killing people. It is unfortunate that the place where women go to become beautified is the same place they're going to to die. And that I want to become the voice of that. My global mission is to change that, to educate the people because they don't know. These chemical relaxers are very harsh. Mm. And the biggest lie that they've told the consumers 
is that it's a no lie. You know, they came up with another line of relaxers yeah. and they called it no lie. That's the biggest lie. Yeah. Because anything that contains an, a hydroxide is a lie. Whether it be calcium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, yeah. they're all lies. And they never stop working. So the fact that hairdressers are going to overlook mm. basing the scalp to protect the skin from these harsh chemicals is you know, beyond my thought, like, what are you thinking about? Yeah. I have told people, if you see, if you see your hairdresser putting on some gloves mm -hmm. and she's not protecting your scalp, yeah. you need to get up and leave. Okay. Because uh, again, your scalp is your skin. You Actually, put, most of them do that a lot. And they just skip that step. Yeah. And you're causing great harm. It never stops working. Hydroxide never stops working. So even after they've rinsed it and maybe neutralize it, it has, it's entering your scalp, it's entering the pores, it's going to eventually end up in your bloodstream. And years from now, you're going to be having some type of illness that you did not realize was related to that situation. Now, um, a few years ago, when I, because I, I retired for two and a half years and came mm -hmm. out of retirement, mm -hmm. and I noticed like 100% of the women that I saw had hair and or scalp issues, 100% of the new clients. Wow. They had hair and or scalp issues. Like you said, they had the dandruff, mm -hmm. they had dry scalp, they had itching. Some of them had scar tissue on yeah. their scalp, you yeah. know, a lot of hair breakage. I also noticed with the young girls, a lot of them were developed. Um, big breasts, big hips, big derriere. And I'm only noticing that on the melanin dominant people. Yeah. And because I'm a multiculturalist hair stylist, yeah. I realized that there was a difference in what I was seeing in my non-black clients to what I was seeing in my black clients. Um, it was just my thought, like my experience. I says, you know what? I think the relaxer has a lot to do with it. I'm hearing my uh, black woman clients talking about fibroid tumors, polycystic ovaries, polycystic breasts, migraine headaches. Shaz, you might just have to hold it right there because I have a question coming up about um, the diseases that people get out of these products that we are using. It is now time to pay our bills. Don't go so far. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to the Skin Therapy Show. I'm your host, Sarah Dano. Just before the break, Shaz, you were talking about uh, the diseases that are caused by some of these products. Would you please expound on that? Yes, definitely. Um, as I said before, I noticed that uh, my melanin dominant clients were talking about the same things. The conversation was the same. They were having migraine headaches, polycystic ovaries, polycystic breasts, uh, fibroid tumors, heavy bleeding through their menstrual cycles. Yeah. The young girls, they were developing so quickly. Uh, lots of the girls you know, that I thought was 15 were like nine years old. And you speak to the mom and she was having a menstrual cycle since she was seven or eight years old. Well, about three years ago, Boston University just released a study they were conducting for 12 years. They studied 23,000 black women between the ages of puberty to premenopausal. And they came to the conclusion that there's a direct relationship between fibroid tumors and relaxers, mm -hmm. and also menage mm -hmm. and relaxers. Menage is accelerated puberty in our young girls, wow. okay? Because I had people tell me, well, you know, it's the hormones and the food. Mm -hmm. Well, the black boys are eating the same food. You yeah, know, the Hispanic the and the white kids are eating the same unhappy meal yeah. from that same unhealthy place, mm -hmm. and they weren't having that problem. But when I spoke to the parents of these girls, they were applying relaxers to their hair, the little kitty kits that they bought from the store, applying it to their little daughter's hair from the time she was three years old. All right. Now the instructions might say 12 minutes, 13, 14 minutes yeah. means that it has to be on and off their head in 12 or 13 or 14 minutes. But what they did was put it on the child's hair, put them in front of the television to watch some cartoon mm -hmm. and says, tell mommy when it's burning. Well, it never burns because now they have had some type of calcium hydroxide, yeah. something that is not going to cause as much sensitization. What happens to that child is by the time she's 14 years old, the skin on her scalp has scarred. She's lost four headfuls of hair and is now inclined to wear a wig, a weave or a lace front for the rest of her life. Wow. That is how serious it is. You find the girls are breaking out around their hairline, um, you know, on their foreheads, their skin, they're breaking out, they're breaking out on their neck, you know, their shoulders. Mm -hmm. And you find that a lot too with women who are wearing hair extensions. 
okay? Yeah. Because a lot of the times the hair extensions are processed with formaldehyde, hydrochloric acid, and chlorine bleach. And then they spray a silicone coating on it, put it in a package, it looks very nice and pretty, to present to the retail market. Even though the package on all of the products that I have read, each package says shampoo and condition before using. Yeah, yeah. And it's not being done. Even when you go to a salon professional, they do not shampoo and condition that hair. They're putting harsh chemicals mm. onto their client's skin mm. and onto their scalp. Hence, the patting. See a lot of yeah. women patting and yeah, itching. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then like I said, they break out on their forehead. They have this rash or this acne mm. all around their cheek, you know, their backs, their shoulders. Their husband is sick. The kids are sick and they don't realize now because you're laying on the bed next to your husband or your loved one, he's inhaling the chemicals. And now you have a whole sick family. And if you're going to be doing this constantly, because a lot of the times these women put in these hair extensions and they don't want to shampoo it. Why? Because they're afraid it's going to mat. Yeah. Because every time they shampoo, that silicone coating comes off and then the hair mats. So they're scared to do that. But they need to really get rid of that silicone coating because it's toxic. It's very toxic. There are, the people who are manufacturing these products, they don't have any interest in us and our health. The only interest they have in us is commerce, yes. is economics. Yeah. You know, the Koreans, um, every year they get a census from the United States government as to how many black females are born every year. And they do a financial projection 14 years out because they know by the time she's 14 years old, she's going to be wearing a wig, mm -hmm. a lace front, or a weave. Yeah. And it's a big industry. The hair industry is 10 to 15 billion US dollars. That's just in the United States. 10 to 15 billion dollars a year, all right? And 89% of that money comes from black women. Yet only 1% of the industry is owned by black people. Back again to the products, how am I going to identify the right product to use for my hair that is not going to have any effect on my skin? Okay, first off, you need to start using products that are probably more eco-organic. And there's a difference between natural and eco-organic. Like people think, oh, well, I'm using a natural product. But then when I look at the natural product and I look at the, look at the ingredients, they have stuff like mineral oil and petrolatum. Mm -hmm. That's not good for our skin. It's not good for our scalp. Okay, so we need to use things that have oils that are more penetrable, probably like um, vegetable and fruit oils, you know, stuff that has maybe avocado oils, olive oils, and all of that stuff. Because not because the brand says olive oil, I mean, that's what it is. Because you might start reading the ingredients and realize that the olive oil is probably the second to last ingredient yeah, yeah. on there. You know, they let them get away with so much. The regulation is so lax in what um, people are being fooled with. You know, what is presented to them. And the consumer doesn't know any better. Mm -hmm. If they say that this thing is going to do a miracle, they believe it's going to do a miracle. Yeah. And, and that's not right. So we need to focus uh, or try to get products, like I said, that are more pure, um, doesn't have all of these other um, toxins in there. Anything that's more natural is going to be, a, a more organic, I should say, is going to be much better for your hair and for your skin. Great. Anything else you'd like to add in regards to the same topic? Um, yes, in regards to the same topic, I will highly recommend that people use the Natural Axa brand. Because Natural Axa, we have an eco-organic line, mm -hmm. and we also have a vegan line. Okay? okay? And because, again, of my mission to turn glam green and take the pain out of beauty, one strand at a time. That was my motivation be behind developing that product. I needed to get a product that was going to be great for people's hair and it was going to be for their skin. Okay? The same product that I would use on someone's hair as an alternative to chemical relaxer, that same product can be used on the scalp as a scalp dressing. It can be used as a deep conditioner, as an instant conditioner, as a moisturizer for your skin. A mo uh, it can be used as a lip balm. You can use it on your face. Yeah. And if you can use something on your lips and it doesn't affect you, because that's the softest part of your body and the most sensitive part. So if you can apply it to your lips and you don't have a reaction, then you know that that product is safe. 
there you have it from the most talented Miss Sharon Brown. Thank you so much for gracing us today. We're really honored. And uh, I'm sure you're on social media. So many people like to ask you questions in, yeah, in class. Maybe media. you can just look at the camera and just let us know where we can reach you. Yes, you can. You can reach me at Shaz Unlimited on Facebook. Shaz Unlimited, that's spelled S-H-A-Z-Z-U-N-L-I-M-I-T-E-D. I'm also on Instagram at Ms. Shaz, M-S-S-H-A-Z-Z. And I'm on our Twitter as well at Shaz X, S-H-A-Z-Z-X. And you can also visit my website, which is www.camfree.com. And Camfree is spelled K-H-E-M-P-H-R-E-E.com. Right. There it is. Uh, are you going to come back in Kenya? Because we would love to have you back on the show. Well, as long as you invite me back here, Thank I will you. be back. Because okay. I love Kenya. Kenya <laughs> reminds me so much of my country. Trinidad. It does. Yes. It does a lot. Okay. Yes. So we look forward to having you back. Thank you so much. For this week's Skin Therapy Show, please do not forget to leave us your questions, suggestions or concerns. Also get in touch with us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Be sure to join us next week, same place, same time. Have a good mm -hmm. night.